Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Data Dispatch. I hope you guys are having a great Sunday. We have some really important news and some great results actually to report on for Palantir and their involvement with some of these private sector clients. Also, we're gonna be talking about possible trading action as volatility could be high in terms of next week. There's a lot of uncertainty with the interest rate cuts. Is that going to be happening? Is it going to be delayed? A lot to unfold here at the table. So if you are new to the channel or a returning viewer, thank you so much for supporting a smaller content content creator. I can't thank you guys enough for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe for daily videos. And of course, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just collecting all the data and dispatching it to you. Now, one of the pieces of very exciting news that I do want to start with here in today's video is remember the NHS contract in Palantir. That was one of the biggest contracts in the previous few months that Palantir had riding under its belt. Remember when they secured it, there's a lot of hype and trendiness behind it. What we do have is this recent support that the waiting list falls again as the NHS staff treat more patients than ever before in one month. Now, of course, there could be lots of variables that do lead to this productivity that we've seen here at the NHS. But since then, Palantir has formed and secured the, the contract contract to form their partnership. And if they had had any effect on this recent support, that could be very bullish for Palantir and a catalyst and a test to its credibility for future clients going down the line. And this shows here that monthly performance from the NHS data shows that the overall waiting list fell by more than 95,000. So this is great here, reduction of 95,000. And with that, we're seeing 60,000 fewer patients waiting for care in just November than in October. This increase is incredibly important. And for the productivity, patients are benefiting from this in terms of the actual getting medical treatment. So great to see there in terms of actual PLTR, seeing an effect here, having an effect on its AI data analytics software, bringing positive outlook to these different industries. Now let's talk about the price action because this is where things can get juicy. Palantir right now sitting at 1676. This is an exciting price zone for Palantir because in recent trading history, there is not a ton of consolidation here at the 16s. We see support being built here at the 16s, which is incredibly important because as we look here, a great post by the long investor talking about the 20 month projection for Palantir. And what we've seen is this pullback. Remember when PLTR recently set its last year, 52 week year to date high. That was at 21.85, being able to surpass that incredibly strong resistance point at the 20s. And the question is looking at the bullish and the bearish case. Now we're seeing Palantir continuing to pull back from that year to date high testing and coming down to about that 200 moving day average. And that's between about the 14 and $15 price zone. Talking about that failure to hold at that support zone here, basically where Palantir has had a lot of trading experience and consolidation here between the 13s and the 15s right here around that 200 moving day average, we could see Palantir going to the 0.618 Fibonacci retracement. And that is at the $12 price, which could be extremely attractive for the bulls that are looking at a long-term bullish outlook. Talking about that and where Palantir sits at, at a $12 bounce in a support, that could be a great buying opportunity for people taking a long-term growth perspective as Palantir will hopefully try to retest this resistance point here in the near future. However, we also could not test that Fibonacci retracement support. We see Palantir building decent levels at the 16s. I think we would have to see a large shift in the actual global macroeconomic impacts, hence interest rates. If we see some bearish news coming in there, we could see a more and stronger pullback in more of the speculative stocks, AI stocks, things like that, that have a little more volatility behind them. Another great piece of results that I wanted to see with Palantir and actually their business involvements in, in working with these different businesses is talk about this. Remember when Airbus started working with Palantir back here in 2016? Look at what we've seen in terms of results of Airbus versus Boeing in terms of the actual metrics that we see here. Look at the deliveries that we see compared to Boeing. Look at the order backlog, the operating profit, six billion compared to negative two billion with a net cash debt to ratio at seven billion compared to negative 39 billion, even having a smaller market cap compared to Boeing. What you hear, see here is actual success that we're seeing. And this is important as Palantir will continue to work with its actual AIP 
clients and getting more involved with the private sector. And that leads to one of the final segments of this video is talking about will Palantir be a $1 trillion stock by 2035? Now that is a big question to ask. Of course, nobody has the answer to that. I think one of the more important questions to answer is what's gonna be happening next month. And that's going to be Palantir's Q4 earnings. Earnings per share right now is projected to be at eight cents with revenue at about 602 million. Palantir, remember, has been continuing to smash its earnings reports. And we've seen Palantir that has established that fourth quarter of gap profitability, which in this year allows for criteria and inclusion in the S&P 500. When that will happen, nobody knows. The S&P, when they do their whole review board, choosing which stocks need to come in and which stocks need to go out, Palantir could be an inbound stock. We don't know when that will happen. But what we've seen historically is usually about a five to 7% increase in valuation just due to the actual buying pressure from all of the different ETFs and mutual funds and la da 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 da, -da that track the S&P 500. Now, with that, let's talk about the next decade. Will Palantir be a $1 trillion stock in 2035? Well, looking at right now, we see market cap $36.7 billion. Starting to get, you know, a little bit of large in traction, but however, still has a lot of room to growth. I mean, just compare it to some of the big blue chip stocks that are out there. What we've seen with Palantir and what its path and its actual potential for growth is still in its infancy, I believe, because AIP is newer. It's not even a year old. And what we've seen with them changing their outlook and their business actual, I wanna say, behaviors, getting more involved with the private sector and not just focusing on these governmental contracts, which have been a great success story for Palantir as they brought great credibility to the company. But with Palantir, in order for it to actually hit $1 trillion by 2035, even with the potential for AIP, this stock needs to have an average growth rate of 36% per year. Now, with that, I think productivity metrics are going to be really important to judge to see if that 36% per year can actually happen. And even if the market cap falls short of $1 trillion over the next 11 years, I think this market cap is still going to be significantly higher than it is today. Now, of course, a lot of people need to take their own risk assessments, doing their own research and analysis on Palantir because there are going to be many other competitors that do enter the industry within the next decade. Especially as AI is continuing to take traction, it's going to be important to look at a whole portfolio of different AI stocks that are within the field, not putting all your eggs in one basket. But I think Palantir, being a leading competitor in the industry, what we've seen, they've been in the game for only for over 20 years, but they've only been traded publicly in the last three years. Now that they've met basically full profitability, have great financials on hand, they have a lot of money that they can invest to continue developing their artificial intelligence technology. And with that, Data Dispatch is remaining bullish on Palantir. Let me know what you think down in the comments. What, the, what do you think is gonna be happening? Do you think it can hit one trillion in 2035? Do you see the bullish results here? What do you make sense for that? All right, catch you guys later. Peace out, have a great week.